I decided to film a fall makeup look for you guys today. I just, I love fall makeup. This isn't going to be a too, too long of an intro. I'm just going to jump right into the video. I hope you guys like this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. So my eyebrows are already done off camera. I wanted to do um, a separate eyebrow tutorial, more in-depth eyebrow tutorial. I'm just waiting a little while longer until I upload that video. Not too long. It'll probably be... If not the next video, then the video after the next one I upload. But yeah, it should be coming pretty soon, so watch out for that. But yeah, let's jump right in. So first we're going to start off with our Tarte Poreless Primer. This primer is really good. It does a pretty good job at keeping my face matte. I have combination oily skin, so my T-zone my looks really oily without a mattifying primer. So I like to focus the most amount of products on my T-zone. Now that we have that on our faces, we're going to go in with my favorite mixture of foundations. This is the L'Oreal Pro Matte Infallible Foundation in the color 105 Natural Beige. And this is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in True Beige. This is a little bit too cool for me, so that's why I like mixing it. I find that applying the Maybelline Foundation, the Maybelline Fit Me, applies way better with a beauty sponge aside from um, a brush. A beauty sponge just gives it m a more of a airbrushed look. I don't like how it looks with a brush too much. I don't really like it. Some foundations apply better with a brush and some apply better with a beauty sponge. So I'm just going to dot that at the bottom of my face. I like to do it this way better because if I dot it around my whole face, I could easily apply way too much foundation and then there would be nothing that I could do about it then. So you always want to make sure to blend the foundation into your ear, down to your jawline, your neck. Another thing that I really like about using beauty sponges is that you can't really, it doesn't really allow you to cake it on, especially like if it's damp. You always, if you have a beauty sponge, always use it damp. When I first started using beauty sponges, I didn't know I was supposed to use them damp. So yeah, my foundation would look cakey. If you don't use your beauty, your beauty sponge damp, your foundation could look extremely cakey. So yeah, that, I would always see beauty groups on YouTube like, doing their foundation with a damp beauty blender and I'm just like why are they using a damp beauty blender? Why does it have to be damp? Like why can't it just be dry? Until one finally explained it. But yeah, using a damp beauty blender it absorbs all the excess foundation. So like you it won't it won't allow you to look cakey. It just a beauty blender is just always a good way to go. And there's a lot of great dupes for a beauty blender. So like this one. This one really does is I honestly don't see a difference between this and the beauty blender. I think this one does is it's just just as good. Okay. I always spend the most time on my eyebrows and my foundation because those are two things to me that just that have to look perfect. So now we're gonna go in with the concealers. Today I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the color 10. We're just going to apply that to where the light hits our faces naturally, which is under our eyes. You always want to go in a, in a triangular shape. It just gives you that really nice pulled back look. And 
the center of our foreheads, down the bridge of our nose. Sorry, if you guys can't see what I'm doing, sorry. And in the center of our chin. If there's a spot that you don't want to bring too much attention to, I would advise you guys not to put concealer there because the, con the concealer would only bring um, attention to that spot. So if you feel like you have a big chin, don't put concealer on your chin. I also feel like the best way to apply concealer is with a damp beauty blender or a damp beauty sponge. I like this one a lot because the flat side allows you to put the foundation on and it doesn't really get around the whole sponge. Like there's a big barrier between where I put my concealer and my foundation. So now we're just going to set that with our Maybelline New York Studio Line Shine, Shine Free Loose Powder. This it says it's in the shade light, but it honestly, I don't notice any color. I just like to dump some in the cap and then pick it up with my damp beauty sponge. And I put it underneath my eyes. I'm just I'm just putting it everywhere that we applied that. Um concealer. Now I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and I'm just going to set the rest of my face with the same powder. I'm just going to tap off all the excess and just put it all over my face. So while we let that bake, we're going to go in with our eyes. So we want to start off by priming our eyes. You don't always have to use an actual eye, um, eyeshadow primer. You could, but honestly, concealer looks just as good. So I'm just going to apply that same concealer that I use to highlight my face on the lid of my eyes. And I'm going to blend that out with my damp beauty sponge again. So now we're going to go in with our Morphe 350 palette. If you guys don't know about this brand, then you guys definitely need to go out and buy some of their palettes, some of their products, especially their eyeshadows. They are really affordable. They're a really good brand. I love them. They're amazing. So we're going to start off. I'm going to be using with um, our transition shade. Actually, no. We're going to start off with setting our um, eyes because... We cannot have creased. We cannot have creased eyelids. Setting your um your eyes, it also creates a really smooth canvas for when you're applying on your eyeshadow. I'm using a Morphe 441 to do this, and I'm using this corner shade right here on the palette. You always want to use either like a ball a, like I would I always use a color that's like closest to my skin 
or closest to the concealer color because let's be real this isn't close to my skin <laughs> close to the color of the concealer or you can use like a white bone color you can use like a, a color with like a yellowy tinge to it it's all up to your preference so before we start let me just zoom the camera in a little bit so we're gonna pick up this color right here and I'm going to be picking that up on a MAC 217 brush. This is like a warm brown, orangey kind of color. It's coming up a little lighter on camera than what it looks like in person. So we're just going to pick that up. Tap off the excess. And we're going to go in with that right in the crease of our lids. And you want to go back and forth in windshield wiper motion. You don't want to apply too much pressure on the brush and you don't want to hold the brush too close to the top. You want to hold it more to the bottom and just hold it really lightly and don't apply too much pressure. The more pressure you apply, the more patchy your eyeshadow will come out. And the closer you hold it to the top, it the more patchy it will come out as well. This sounds funny, but you always want to have a little bit of the least amount of control on your brush. That way you get that really nice blended out airbrush effect. So you just want to keep on packing that color on until it's to the intensity that you want it to be. So now we're going to go in with a more orangier shade, which is this shade right here. And I'm actually going to mix this shade and this shade together. This is more like a, tr this is more like a, this is even more burnt, an even more burnt orange than this one. So it's these two that I'm going to be mixing. And I'm going to be taking that on that same MAC 217 brush. And then we're going to tap off the excess. And we're going to put it a little bit lower. Sorry. I keep forgetting that I have to have this mirror positioned in a specific spot. So once we feel like it's blended enough, we want to turn the brush to the other side. And then we want to blend that way. And you just want to keep going in until you get the intensity that you like. Your intensity of your eyeshadow is all up to you. Whatever floats your boat. Alright, so now for the fun part, we're going to go in with the shimmery shades. We're going to go in with this shade right here. This is like a really pretty coppery golden kind of shade their eyeshadows are so pigmented I love it okay so we're gonna go in with this wet and wild flat um, shader brush and we're gonna put that all over our lid If you guys want it to be a little bit more intense, a little bit more um, shimmery or metallic, then you guys can spritz it with MAC Fix Plus or you could put eye drops on your brush. You could just spritz it with water. It doesn't really matter. But I don't want it to be too intense. So after this, I'm going to go in with a fluffier blending brush and I'm going to... blend some more of that eyeshadow down so it won't look too shimmery so now we're going to go in with the morphe 441 again and then we're going to mix all the colors that we use except for the shimmery shade which is this color right here this color right here 
this color right here and this color right here and then we're going to lightly dip it in the colors and then we're going to blend that down into that shimmery shade if you guys don't want to do this and you guys don't have to i just didn't want this look to be too intense too shimmery i wanted it to be a little more matte but i still wanted it to have like a pop so yeah so yeah just lightly not too much i also like to do this so there's no harsh lines I really wanted a nice blended airbrush effect. I said that about like 10 times in this video. We're done with our eyes for now. Right now what we're going to do is, is wipe off this bake. So I'm going to go in with my LA Colors I Love Makeup Contour Palette. I raved about this in my last video. I love this. <laughs> okay, so my video cut off, but all I did was... Um, I took these two colors right here, this yellowy color and this more pale color, and I mixed them and just wiped away my bake. So, next, we are going to be applying falsies. So, I'm going to be using the Vegas Nay Grand Glamour lashes. These are the best. These are so pretty. I love these lashes. I wear them with no eyeshadow. I wear them with eyeshadow. I wear them just all the time. They're amazing, and I need a new pair, but... Yeah, let's put these eyelashes on. So I'm going to be applying them with some tweezers and my duo lash glue in dark. I don't, I'm not too bad, I'm not too big of a fan of the duo lash glue because they take way too long to dry. So while we wait for the lash glue to dry, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to put some eyeshadow on my bottom lash line and apply some mascara to my bottom lashes. So I'm going to mix all three colors that we used, which again was this color right here, this color right here, and this color right here. So I'm just going to mix that together on a Morphe E17. And I'm going to dust that on the bottom part of my um, lash line. I don't want it too intense. The more intense you make it, the more smoky it'll make the eye look. And I don't want it too intense. I don't want it to look too smoky. This is a L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. It's in the color, like, it's brown. I didn't know that the gold tube was brown until I bought it. So, yeah. My mistake. Now I know. So now, we're going to contour our face and we're going to go back in with our LA Colors I Love Makeup Contour Palette. And I'm going to be mixing this warm shade right here and then this more cooler shade right here. I don't, this is a little too cool for me. I don't like using cool tone colors to um, contour my face because I feel like it looks muddy on me personally. And we're going to contour a little bit on our forehead. And I'm using the same colors that I used to contour my cheeks to do this. We're going to just line our waterline with a gold eyeliner. You can use any gold eyeliner that you have. I'm using the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the color Dirty Talk. These eyeliners are super pigmented. I'm not sure about, I don't know about all their eyeliners. I only have three from them, but the ones that I have are pretty good. I like them a lot. They're super easy to glide on. They're really nice and pigmented. They don't really transfer much throughout the day. They stay put. I like it. It doesn't crack off because I know some eyeliners like crack off as the day goes by. That doesn't happen with this.
So now for my favorite part of doing makeup. The highlight, I'm going to be using the um, ColourPop, the logo scraped off, but I'm going to be using the ColourPop Super Shock um, Cheek Highlighter in the color Wisp, and I'm going to be applying that with my Morphe 5 M501 brush. I'm not sponsored by Morphe or anything. I just really love Morphe products. I like adding highlighter right underneath the arch of my eyebrow. So I'm going to do that with a little itty bitty flat shader brush. I don't, I, I, I honestly don't know like where you guys could get this brush from. It was like from those little brush sets that you get off like Amazon or eBay when you first start doing makeup. So yeah. This is honestly like the only brush that I like. I can get in really well in my inner corners. I can get in really well um, right underneath my eyebrows. I no longer use those brushes anymore. So to highlight the inner corner of my eye um, of my eyes, I'm going to be taking this shade right here, and I'm just going to be putting that in the corner of our eyes. Now, to finish off the look, we're going to be using this really nice plum lipstick from the color, from, from the color Smashbox, from the brand Smashbox. This is in the color Be Legendary. Alright guys, so this is the finished look. I love this look. It screams fall to me. It is just so pretty, especially with this lipstick. I just love the combination of the eyes and the lipstick. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and feel free to suggest any more videos that you guys would like to see.